Hi guys and welcome back to another video. So I recently come across this little receiver and it's supposed to be able to receive shortwave including AM and sideband, broadcast FM band and airband. So, well, I thought I'll give it a try. Now it comes in a kit and the instructions for putting it together can be found on the product page as a downloadable document. Now I didn't get any documentation in the box, but this version did come with a couple of small loop antennas and an LNA for use with high Z antennas. Luckily, there's no components to solder. All of the boards are already populated with components. There's just some small assembly required to put it all together. So let's quickly just go over the assembly first and then we'll move on to testing the radio reception. So first we'll need to attach the speaker and for this we'll need to remove the radio board that is already attached to the main board. Now this just simply pulls off and it's inserted via a PCB header. Now we'll refit this later in the video. Once the speaker is fitted, we now need to fit four PCB standoffs. Now these will be used to secure that radio board in place after we push it back onto the main board. Okay, so now we can put that radio board back in place and then use four screws on the top, which are obviously included, to secure that radio board to those PCB standoffs. Next, we need to fit the screen. And for this, you'll find one little square of double-sided sticky foam. Now, just place that just before the screen board connector. Now, once in place, lift the little cable securing flap that's on the screen cable connector and then slowly slide the screen cable onto the connector. And this is with the screen facing down. Now, once fully in, push down that little securing flap, which holds the cable in place. You shouldn't then be able to pull it out. You can now position the screen according to that rectangular screen in that's on the main board. Now try and get this as straight as possible the first time as you do not want to have to remove the screen, which could potentially decrease that stickiness of that foam pad. Now the battery that I'll use will be a 18650 battery, which does not come with a radio, but these are cheap enough on Amazon or eBay. Now the radio will not power on until you connect a USB power source. Now this will initialize the radio and it will boot up. Now if the battery is charged, you can just remove the USB cable at this point. Now once you've confirmed the radio is working, you can now build the case. Now weirdly enough, when I unboxed this, I thought all of the case parts I had was either made of cardboard or cheap wood. However, upon closer inspection, it's just the protective film to stop any scratches appearing on that clear plastic case. Now you will need to attach the remaining large standoffs and these are used to secure the case around the radio. And there you go, that should be it. Now it's time to connect an antenna and see what it can receive. Now there's three buttons down the left side and these are function buttons which alter the currently selected item on the screen. The rotary control on the top is also a push button which allows you to change the function of the rotary control and you can change it between volume, change frequency, or select a menu item. Now the screen itself can have a different color theme, which suits you. You just hold the top button in and then tap the bottom button on the side, and it will start to cycle through the different themes. Now down the same side, there's also a 3.5 millimeter headphone socket, which obviously can be used with headphones. Now also on the top, you'll notice two switches. Now one is used for either a high Z antenna or 50 ohm antenna input. Now the other recess switch, now that's to switch between analog mode and digital mode. Now I'm not entirely sure what that means, but the only real difference I noticed is that SSB reception is not possible if you're in digital mode and it will not be available from within the menu if you're in digital mode. Now, as well as having a physical switch to choose between digital and analog mode, you also have to make the change in the menu too. Now that will either show as AO for analog or DO for digital. So that's analog output or digital output. Okay, so let's go through each of the supporting bands and see how well it receives. For the air band and FM broadcast, I'll use my tri-band collinear, which is up on the roof, well above the roof and receives quite well on VHF. And for anything lower than that, like on the HF band or the medium wave AM bands, I'll be using a long piece of wire up at around 12 meters above the ground. Uh, 
So there we go, guys. That's the Geekness Radio. Now, let me know down in the comments what you thought about the audio and demodulation for each of the bands that I showed you in the video. Now, if you notice, when receiving on the FM broadcast band, the no RDS info message disappeared, and that had me thinking that it was decoding the RDS. However, no RDS text ever came through or showed on the screen. Now, this makes me think that the RDS does not work in the UK. Now, I know there are different formats of RDS around the world, so perhaps it only works in certain countries. Now, this radio also supports the use of a Bluetooth speaker, and while on that screen, there also appears to be a Wi-Fi symbol. I could not find any way in which to activate a Wi-Fi connection, but interestingly, though, I've seen photos of this radio online, and apparently it plays internet radio streams but that's something which is not covered in the manual. Also, the firmware for this radio appears to be locked away on a file sharing website that you can only access if you're in mainland China. So if you have access to this, then please let me know down in the comments as I would like to check if this radio has the latest firmware. Anyway, guys, thanks very much for watching and until the next video, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.